Welcome to A Shot of Facts. This is your girl Deja Renee and this episode is A Shot of Black Technology with Dr. Robert Wallace. Now Dr. Robert Wallace is an internationally known entrepreneur with three multi-million dollar companies. He is an author, a business consultant, and a keynote speaker from Baltimore, Maryland. Now he has over also 41 years of engineering, energy, IT, and coaching industry experience. And he also leverages his expertise to educate and inspire entrepreneurs, executives, and audiences around the world. So Robert, how are you doing today? I'm doing super fantastic. I'm actually uh, uh, up doing what I love to do, which is, to, which is skiing up in New England. And uh, so I'm having a great time. <laughs> That's great. You know, I actually never went skiing before, but I feel like it's kind of a skill that you have to learn. Oh, you do. You do. Yeah. It, it's, <laughs> I, you know, I learned from my wife. She taught me how to ski years ago. So she's a really good downhill skier. I'm, I, I love cross country skiing because it's a good workout and you get out in the, you know, in the woods and it's quiet and it's clean and the air is fresh. And I find it is a nice way for me to kind of regenerate myself a bit. So we really enjoy it. I definitely understand where you come from. Now, since you are a black STEM advocate, you work in STEM from over 41 years of experience. That's correct. My first question is, what is your intake on black people getting into STEM fields? Do you think we need to have more representation? Do you think the representation is good where it's at? What are your overall opinions? Uh, that's a great question. I. I as you, as you said, I am a, a very avid and strong um, uh, supporter of the um, STEM and some would say STEAM initiative um, and for many reasons. W one, if you look at, if you look at like the creation of wealth in America, at least over the last, I don't know, 40, 40 years or so, the, the wealth creation engine of our country has come from the engineering and scientific part of our economy. If you look at the, the, the companies that are that are expanding in their wealth creation, they tend to be tech companies. You, know, you look at Facebook, you look at Twitter, right. you look at Tesla, you look at Amazon. I mean, even Amazon is not really, people don't view it always as a tech company, but the foundation and the platform of Amazon is technology. People don't so know what all look at, Amazon is involved in as well, too, when it comes to technology. So that's yes, yes, absolutely. I mean, I mean, you can go down the list. I mean, and I, you know, I've said in one of my recent books, I said that 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 professionals, even if they're not in a tech company, they really are technologists, right? right? Because whether you're an attorney or you're a medical doctor or you're a teacher or you're a sociologist, whatever it is, the platform and foundation in which you run your run your business, per, pursue your career is a technology platform. And so I really push this idea. And I think that 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 African American people and people of color would be in a better position if we were to be greater participants in the, the STEM fields. And so I'm a really big proponent of getting our young people trained, getting them, you know, positioned to benefit from these, these opportunities in tech. You know, we have, my, my wife and I, we have five kids, four boys and one girl, and we have three and a half engineers, right, of the five. And I say the, the half is my daughter. <laughs> yeah, right, because she, she majored in, uh, in history, but she minored in computer science. Oh. So I give her a half engineering, you know, um, designation. But but we, we, we pushed our kids and we directed them into STEM fields. And the idea being, well, we want you to get a foundation in technology and then you can grow from there. You can be a doctor, a lawyer, you know, teacher, whatever, but you have a, a platform of foundation in, in, in STEM. So yes, I do support that. Now for someone who has not, I want to say, you know, a lot of times for black kids growing up in urban neighborhoods, I'm from Detroit myself. I never was introduced to technology or STEM until really I got into college and right. majored in it and struggled because I didn't have a foundation in it. Right. So what can be a method for kids who want to get into the technology field? They want to get into STEM, but they don't have the resources. What can they do? Yeah, that's a great question. And, and that's one of the, 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 the challenges that we face as a people in terms of getting more of our young people, you know, into this sector. 
And um, I think that the it's important for people like myself and you, and you and others who have who are either in the field or who have been exposed to it that we have to reach back and we have to expose our young people to the STEM sector. I think that when children and young people are exposed to what engineers and scientists and chemists and physicists do, that that I find that the majority of them get excited. They just don't have any linkage to help them to understand that area. So there's other people like me and you and others to help to make that happen. So what do I do? So what I do is I write about it um, in my companies. I mentor uh, young African-American students to, to expose them to engineering and science. Um, you know, in my, in my uh, businesses, you know, hiring, you know, young, young scientists and exposing them, supporting schools that are, that are focused on um, building a STEM pipeline um, of, of kids from the, from the inner cities uh, and from the rural areas as well. Right. And so I think that we have, we can do something to just expose our kids. And here's my premise. My premise is once you expose them and they see what it is, the majority of them will get excited about it and want to be a part of it. So I think that's what we can do. Yeah, I feel like exposure and experience, first of all, to get a good position in STEM, you need that experience anyway. Like you before you graduate college, you need internship experience and things of that sort. So giving our kids that leverage from a young age will put us in a higher place and position when it Amen. comes to STEM. Amen. It sure will. It sure will. And it will and it will help change the wealth equation too. Because I'm, you know, as I say in my in my books, that that the wealth equation is driven by entrepreneurship. And I'm suggesting that there's a lot of entrepreneurial opportunities that are based upon technology that our young people who are just as smart as anybody else can get in and be a wealth creation player in the economies of the of the present and the economies of the future. So I think it's imperative that our community really expands the pipeline of young people of color going into engineering and the sciences. Definitely. Now, let me ask you this question, because yeah. I know you are experienced in natural resources, environmental science with your solar energy service. That's right? correct. Um, so my question to you is how do you feel about environmental injustice when it comes to black neighborhoods because i majored i have my master's and undergrad in environmental science and one of the reasons why i majored in that uh field is because growing up in southwest detroit mm -hmm. i lived by salt mines i lived by oil refineries yes, and so many people even in my family my friends all have some form of cancer some form of asthma and I realized that this is not normal and this is environmental racism that's going on. So yeah. what is your opinion about overall environmental injustice and systematic racism overall as well? So let me start with, first of all, that that what you just said, in, environmental racism, environmental inequality is real. It is not it's not made up. It's not a maybe. Right. It's not a might be. It is real. Uh, you shared your experience, I can share mine. Being raised in South Baltimore in the projects, it was interesting that the city of Baltimore decided years ago when they were going to put out uh, uh, to build a trash incineration um, facility and a, and a land dump where they would dump trash. It was adjacent to my community. I remember when I was a kid, we were, you know, I was, I was very much into sports. We played baseball and basketball. But I remember playing baseball and being out, and I played center field. And I remember being out in center field, which happened to be right next to the open dump and the incinerator. So on days where they burnt the trash um, and we were playing sports, our, our eyes would literally burn from the smoke from the incinerator, right? Um, when they were putting in the landfill, the trash in the landfill, I remember playing playing center field and looking down at the ground and it seemed, it seemed like the ground was moving. But what was really happening was it was rats, right? Who had, because they had built the, 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 the ball field over the, the landfill. And so the rats were, were being active. I mean, this was the environment that I was raised in. And like you said, like you, and, but, and there are tens of thousands of us who were raised in those environments. And like you said, who can tell, who knows the, the health 
um, consequences yeah. of us being raised in that smoke and being near the landfill for, for, for decades. Um, so you're absolutely correct. And one of the things that I really push in our energy business, uh, we're, we're about to create a, a quarter billion dollar fund that will invest in solar energy projects that will benefit low and middle income communities across America. And part of the reason we're doing that is because of the environmental injustice that we've lived through. We want to use renewable energy as a tool to help to, to re remediate some of that and to make it a better living environment for people, for all people. And that's why I feel like we need more black representation in STEM because people like you are advocating for our communities to help us have just better qualities of life or yes, of living. That's one that's of right. the main issues. And I realized from a young age that this was not normal. Like we used to have a huge problem with acid rain. Right. And yeah. like our eyes would be burning. If it rained yeah. outside, we were outside, our eyes were burnt. Yes, ma'am. And, red. and yes, it was always like a, a boil water advisory. And it's just like, it's not normal. And no, it, it isn't. That's a great, great point. Another you know, anecdotal story, in my neighborhood in South Baltimore, most of the men in my neighborhood, the fathers, right? Uh, most of them died from cancer. And they had all kinds of cancers, um, throat cancer, skin cancer, pancreatic cancer. I mean, they, it, it, it was interesting. Most of the men in my neighborhood who died, they died from these cancers. And they worked down at the Bethlehem, in Bethlehem Steel and the steel plant and, and just being exposed to all of these chemicals and all. I gotta believe that that environment has something to do with yeah. the high incidence of cancer deaths particularly of black men in my in my own neighborhood. So I think you own something. And if we don't have representation in, in those areas, it's not that people are intentionally bad or dastardly. It's just that they, they're not sensitive to the issue that you and I might be sensitive to. Right. So we need to be at the table, right? You know, there's an old saying we use, I use in, in, in mentoring young young entrepreneurs. And I, and I say, if you don't have a seat at the table, that means you're on the menu. Right. So no seat at the table means you're on the menu. You do not want to be on the menu. You want to be have a seat at the table. So I think that's very important to consider. 